What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through today, Thursday's MLB slate. Um, I had a bad day yesterday. I didn't win during the day. I lost. Uh, I only played a few lineups, but lost all those. And then uh, had a winning night last night. Nothing crazy, but a solid night. Keep coming close. A lot of top tens in the in the big buy-ins uh, lately for me. And whether it's the 250 or the 222 or the 888, just seems like I can't quite get over the hump. But uh, hopefully we can change that today. And uh, Sheets, how did you do? And then let's jump into today's uh, eight game. Yeah, I may as well share my screen here. This was this is oh, yeah. my. Uh, we should do this every day. I'm gonna I'm gonna share. I share my. I'll share my big buy-in from yesterday. I like that. Yeah. And kind of show you where I went. So I did end up going chalk pitching with Snow and Otani. But what I what I decided I was gonna and we talked about this by the way like right on in the, in the live stream I said this is what I was gonna do is gonna mm-hmm. play Pittsburgh and play zero San Diego right so so I had Pittsburgh uh, it's a little it's a little it's a little it's a little sketchy right I ended up with Pittsburgh I ended up with a one percent on Marcano whatever the eighteen oh my god yeah I just I just didn't play O'Neill Cruz for some reason that was that was way too easy for me you know what I mean? <laughs> why, why would I why would I play the, the best play right? and 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 uh, and the other and the Brian other Reynolds player. right Brian why, why, why would I play the two best players when I could go ahead and, you know, and then <laughs> that's why I got kind of punished by the, uh, the Tayo Marcano success is because, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. Because I forgot to play the actual good players, you know? Um, but a uh, little, and, and I got, I got my, uh, you know, got Milwaukee rolling. I got Pittsburgh rolling. I did well enough, you know? Yep. Um, and I, I want to shout out to, to, to you actually. And this is, this is, listen, for those people that are, that are, that, that tune in for the late stuff, um it's where you get my bobby's like takes and bobby you you brought this up earlier when we talked about it early and late we talked about different ways to play san diego i, I believe one of us so said that you everybody should play brandon drury yeah and, and and that wasn't me um yeah. and, and 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 he was like going to be the only guy that people wouldn't play because he was overpriced and he came right out and blasted one right uh yeah, yeah, great play. so uh so that was uh, that was a good call by you and um yeah, ready to ready to get to today. I'm I'm I I said I wasn't gonna play the to myself I wasn't gonna play the three thirty slate, but but who am I kidding? I, I'm gonna figure out how to play three thirty slate in a little while. <laughs> I don't know funny. if I'll be able to scoot online or uh, live or anything, but I'll definitely put some numbers up because I actually do think it's kind of uh some good good games there. But uh, let's uh let's talk about the the main. Oh, slate. and they actually even have some decent tournaments. Okay, maybe I'll take a look at that myself yeah. when we're done with. I this. already reserved spots, so yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into the main slate. And um, yeah, I think it's interesting what you were mentioning. I think that it's just, a, you know, an example of you can like the thing is a lot of low winning lineups had a little a lot of chalk last night because that's going to happen on those four gamers. I still liked my strategy of playing some of the A's, even though it didn't work out terrifically. Yep. I did have the lineup with the o- O'Neill Cruz, uh, Brian Reynolds and Sean Murphy. And I had San Diego mostly right, but not entirely right there. Otherwise, that would have won everything. Yep. Um, but it was, you know, it was felt good about the process and on those small slates and this is a much bigger slate but it's 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 still not a you know we're not talking about 13 games here so you really have to adjust your play I feel uh in relation to you know the size of the slate and everything like that and it's something that we've gotten that I that I think I've gotten better and better at over the years on these on the really little slates to try to find ways to be different you're going to lose most of the time but when you hit you can really hit big and that's why even with your lineup yeah you didn't play any San Diego and you still cash that deep and for San Diego who literally not only scored a bunch of runs but had guys hitting home runs left and right. And uh, it just, I mean, it just goes to show you, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. So, all right. Did they, did they postpone that, that St. Louis game before law? No. Okay. But I, I, I was operating under that. It wasn't going to play. So I didn't. But did anybody play any of these guys? I mean, did anybody get, did anybody get screwed? I mean, or. Um, uh, I, I'm sh- I, everybody we recommended was to stay away from, I mean, everything was recommended to stay away from it. So I, no, I, I know. I was wondering if in general, like any of those guys got like, you know, 5% ownership or, or higher or anything. Like I that. don't, I didn't notice anything. I don't know. I didn't really check. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't, I have no idea to be honest, but okay. um, all right. You ready to jump into Philly and Washington? Yeah, let's come right out of the gate with the chalk, I guess. Um I, I, I have I have Philly as as my clear top stack of the day. Um when I first looked at my rankings, I didn't even know who they were playing. I presume they were at Colorado, um, mm-hmm. considering how much higher I had them rated by everybody else. But no, they are uh, actually at home, I uh, guess again, uh Espino. And they're looking at least at this early juncture to be, I mean, not only the top play, but also the highest owned. 
Um, mm -hmm. So take both those things for what they are. <laughs> um, I feel this is a kind of a weird pitching slate that you do have some top, some top, uh, some top arms, but you could, you could sprinkle some other guys in. And I do think that that Syndergaard is in play here a little bit um, actually. So um, I will, uh, 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 I, 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 I will, I will definitely consider that. Um, so yeah. for me, Syndergaard and, and Philly. Yeah, I actually, uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard not to agree with Philly. One thing you can do to get different is the bottom of the projected order. We don't know what it's actually going to be. Yeah. It's actually pretty with uh, Bryson Stott and Brandon Marsh, I think you could include into to your mix at low ownership. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's get to it. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's get to the, I guess this is actually, I, I agree with everything you said. I think Syndergaard's in play and I think Philadelphia makes some sense. I'm still not sure where they're going to rate for me stack wise because of the ownership, but at early on, it does look like a pretty good spot. So, all right, Braves and Mets, which feels to me, um, I don't know, like a stay away sheets. Am I, am I right on that? Or what are your thoughts on this one? Cause I, I don't well, feel it doesn't, for, first of all, it doesn't matter to me, but I had, I had Houston Cleveland next. Oh, that's so fine. Sorry. Sorry. They're all the same time. This is fine. Um, uh, Atlanta and the Mets. I don't think I have interest in anything in this game. Um, I'm just going to confirm that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have, I have Carrasco just like a real, kind of a real sketchy secondary play i guess um mm -hmm. but but really sketchy as far as i'm concerned um and uh, not getting to any of the hitting here yeah um carrasco's you know been better lately but has also had some very favorable matchups he's had struggle some struggles and some tough matchups this year and um he was really good against atlanta earlier in the season but I, I, there's a part of me that kind of wants to maybe consider a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of Atlanta. Uh, but I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull the trigger at these, most of the prices. I think Acuna either, any way you slice it is, is a premier play at any time. He's, I mean, he's any price to be honest, but he's 5,100, which is just a little lower than he should be in general, but uh, I can get behind a potential low owned Atlanta stack. I just don't think it's a priority for me at this point. And sorry for jumping ahead. We can we can jump over to Houston, Cleveland now. I see a little rain cloud here in the DraftKings app. Is there weather concerns, at least from what you're looking at early in this game or no? Yeah, a little bit, but I don't think it's as of right now, I don't have it as terrible, but it's uh certainly something to pay attention to. And you have a you have a guy who's who's lowered his strikeouts in Verlander, and you have a team that doesn't strike out much in Cleveland. So it's kind of an interesting situation here. Um Verlander is uh, obviously a strong play. Like, I mean, he's just, uh, to be honest with you, he's just fantastic as a, as a pitcher. This is, it's pretty, if you look through his pitching things, it, the number of ones and zeros you see for his entire starts for earned runs is pretty, pretty, pretty remarkable. Um, so yeah, I like Verlander, but I would caution everybody at 10, four with the, the low strikeouts that against a team that doesn't strike out much, maybe a little bit to be concerned about there. Um, you know, they're, 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 there are two guys like that today, like Verlander. Well, not exactly like that, but you have Verlander at 10-4, and then you have, and we'll get to him, but then you have Manoa at 9-6, right? And, and, and you know, they're, they're definitely, I mean, the two best pitchers, right? But it's weird. I mean, and, and listen, I don't want to compare Manoa to Verlander, but the, the narrative very similar. You know, they, they both kind of pared down their, their strikeouts mm -hmm. in the name of just being better pitchers, sort of. And it is kind of really weird to, to compare it to because Manoa's like 14 years old and, and Ver, Verlander's like 80, you know what I mean? So right. they're totally different level stages of their careers, right? And and one would have a much different motivation than the other one for doing that, right? Um, but but nonetheless, from a projection perspective, I mean, he's going to look just kind of okay, Verlander, because of his kind of reduced strikeout rate. Um, and like you said, Cleveland's not the greatest matchup when you're trying to strike people out. But... I'm looking at the slate and, and I, yeah. it's not as if there's a lot of competition for, for big, big fantasy points here. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's some really good value, you know what I mean? In a couple of spots, which you'll get to, but there's not a lot of just like pure 25 to 30 point upside out there. I don't think on the slate. So I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, you know, not that I don't care about the strikeout rate or whatever, but I mean, still Verlander, he's still going to throw a thousand pitches. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 have, I don't think I'm going to have a problem paying 10-4 for him if you want to know the truth. 
Yeah, yeah, I I, I get it. I, I think that it does make he certainly does make a lot of sense. I I do want to say that I think Houston is a terrific stack. Uh, that at, I'm I'm currently looking at it as not as owned as I would have guessed at first glance. It doesn't mean it'll stay that way. But this lineup is now very 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 deep. Uh, with when you have Mancini batting seventh and Vasquez batting eighth. Um, it's just a whole lot different than Maldonado and all the other guys that they had called up. You could even throw Jake Myers into the mix there. I think this is a good stack to go. Um, um, yeah, I, I think this is a really, you know, a really, really solid stack against Plesak here on this particular slate. And I probably won't be five man stacking tonight. Houston is a team that I would consider doing it with. Uh, but I think that I'm looking more at a four man uh, sort of thing in general, because it's not like there's these, insane spots outside of i guess philly you could say um but i think this is the next i think this this you could argue this is the next best stack here and we'll get over to the to the next one in a minute but uh i really i i just love this lineup for houston i think they're going to score a bunch of runs uh, uh they're going to be a be- much better scoring team uh as the season moves forward with how, how much better their offense is uh they are some of them are kind of expensive but you can negate that with guys like mancini and guriel um who are who are totally reasonable Kyle Tucker's even reasonable at 4500 so I, I I like Houston quite a bit yeah I have Houston rated as kind of tied for second overall um mm-hmm. as far as stats go so I, I totally agree with that I do have them significantly below Philly but uh but but yet still um and I it was really weird I, I ran a um I ran a, I ran a build and I did get a lineup or two with Plesak I don't know if I'm going to actually do it um but it mm-hmm. just you know at 7200 he's uh I mean, I like other guys even better at that price. But anyway, just to, just just in the name of, of, of disclosure, I didn't come up with a lineup or two with him in it. But I do like have Houston as as probably my second favorite, uh, second highest scoring stack of the day. Yeah, I think that's a pretty uh, pretty reasonable bet. And then we get into anybody versus Detroit is going to be a good a good play every every night. Um, and we've got a guy I could argue might be the best pitcher on this might be the best pitching option on the slate at his price. Um, he's come back. He had two starts to come back. Now he didn't pitch a ton, you know, I didn't throw a ton of pitches in either of them. I think they will let him go maybe a little bit longer here. And Detroit has a way of making you look good a little better against lefties than righties. But I, I think Springs is a terrific option. Um, you see, you know, I, he's got a four and a half K prop, which just seems really low to me. Um, but I think that uh, I think Springs at 7,100 is the, the guy I would prefer over Plesak. And I am very open to playing Tampa Bay. They're an interesting stack to play at, at, you know, you got the expensive low in a Rosarena. Then you've got probably Choi would be the next guy you go to. And then you've got a sort of a whole bunch of other decisions you can make for cheap guys. You could add to the stack. So I think Tampa Bay is right there with Houston. I just don't like the offense nearly as much as I like Houston's. Yeah. I have uh, currently Springs as the top overall uh, value on pitching value on the slate. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I I wasn't aware that there might be um, there might be pitch count issues. Uh, is that is that what you were kind of getting at? Well, it's because he's he, he came back from a from an absence and then in his two starts since then hasn't. Yeah, I mean, he barely he just broke got to five innings last time. Um, I'm just gonna double check how many pitches he actually threw in that game. Um, he threw well, he threw 92 actually on his second start back after a couple weeks off. So I, I actually think he's probably good to go. I don't think it's necessarily. I, I wasn't worried necessarily about pitch count. They just, they'll just be a little bit careful with these young stars um, and their, you know, who they have, they have their whole future built on. So uh, I think Springs is a really good option. I think, I think he's, I think he makes a lot of sense today. And I, and I, and I have actually Tampa as rated, you know, pretty, pretty nicely. Actually, I have them as fourth for me um, overall, which is pretty good. So uh, I, I, I like that actually. So I like, uh, I like Tampa and I like Springs. Yep. Makes sense to me. Um, ready to jump over to Toronto and Minnesota. Yeah. So the aforementioned um, uh, Alec Manoa, um, he's he doesn't he doesn't show up as a particularly great projection. Um, again, probably because of his strikeout rate, um, it's kind of going down a little bit. But we know he's got you know we know he's got a got a ceiling. We know he has upside. Um, I I'm gonna get to him. Um, but I mean, I, I, for what it's worth, I have Springs projected for more fantasy points than Manoa mm-hmm. <laughs> for, for 3000 less pretty much. Um, mm-hmm. because I'm mean, with the match he's against Minnesota and it's just different. Um, mm-hmm. but I, but I do, I do have him as I'm going to come up with him. Well, when you, when you run a Saberson build, 
you're going to get Manoa because what it's going to do is it's going to give you like some results that Manoa's had or could have that you're going to want. You know what I mean? Like it's not necessarily predicting that it's going to happen today, but it's showing that there's a result in his arsenal that if it happens today, you'd like to see on a slate like this. So I'm going to end up with, 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 with some of him. But if you have me rank these guys, like Manoa would barely even make my list, if you want to know the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll still end up with them anyway. I hope, I hope that makes some degree of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't have um, – I didn't get to Sonny Gray, but uh, – and I also didn't get to Toronto, but are we not supposed to play 10% of Toronto every every slate? I'm not sure. In general, I like it. And like, I mean, that's the thing is just, yeah, but I think, and I think that's probably right where the field will be. Uh, Sonny Gray, I actually like as a pitcher and, and, and again, you're going to see some debt, some bad games out of them. And I- I'm okay with that, with the idea of Toronto. I just don't want to play too many teams. Um, I- I'll, I'll revisit Toronto probably later. Cause I don't know if I'm going to want to pull the trigger on that. Uh, I-, I have a little, I have a, I have a little bit of respect for Gray. This game for hitting does, doesn't, I doesn't quite do it for me. I do like Manoa. Um, I think he's in a, you know, I think I'm probably going to end up with four pitchers that I probably end up using tonight. And he is definitely maybe five. Um, He's definitely one of them, but yeah, there's, there's, you know, the thing is that there is some more strikeouts in this, in this lineup than maybe people think uh, because they haven't had, I mean, that you have a few low strikeout guys, but then the bottom of the order with Sanchez cave Contreras, Gordon, I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot more upside here for Manoa than than maybe first meets the eye. So I actually am on I'm on Manoa's side here. He's I have him, you know, there's a little little price difference between him he and Verlander. I have him just behind Verlander, but they're very close for me. So I have a question for you, and I hate to like slant the uh yeah. slant the debate or slant the argument, but but here's the question I have for you. How do you feel about a chalky Jose Quintana today? So how chalky is he really going to be is my first question. I don't know. That's the thing. Um, um, see, I have him right now at 25% and I have Springs at 27%. I don't know for sure that he's starting. Is that I, I've seen a couple mixed things here. Uh, that's what I have on the DraftKings app and all my projections. That's the only reason I have. Yeah, yeah. No, I see it. I mean, uh, I have Stroman. I have, sorry, I have, wait. So they canceled the game yesterday. So it seems logical that Mikolas would pitch. Are they playing the doubleheader today? I didn't even, Maybe. I should probably have double checked this. Um, yeah, they are playing the doubleheader. So I guess, I guess if we'll, we'll know that one a little bit later, but, uh, but yeah, assuming that it is Quintana, um, I don't feel, I don't feel great about it. I don't feel terribly about it. I think it's meh. I think it's fine. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily love him. I prefer Springs. Um, I would rather play the upside there. Quintana just doesn't give you the, you know, that, that strikeout upside to really win you slates very often. And he has to sort of really little room for error. Um, but could he get through a weak Cubs lineup? I think he could. Um, yeah. And, and that, that would be fine for me. And you have a bullpen game for the Cubs um, against a, you know, a pretty decent offense. It's, it's it's always weird, you know. I, I, it's it's hard early in the day when there's a doubleheader because if the team scores like 17 runs in the first game or something like that um, of the doubleheader, and then you come you come back and it, it's hard to imagine that happening again. But yeah, the cards should be on the list. Uh, they're a little lower down for me. You do have some good value in some spots depending on where guys are hitting. Um, but I certainly think the cards against the Cubs bullpen game is reasonable considering the Cubs are terrible. What do you think about that card? I didn't really like quite get to the 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 hitting in this game yet um nothing showed up right off the bat but i I do have quintana rated as kind of the second best overall value Mm -hmm. um on the slate uh and and if if there was legitimately guys to pay for hitting wise i mean i would suggest something like a strings quintana pairing you know um but i don't know if it's that kind of slate you know Mm -hmm. so far i mean the phillies aren't particularly expensive right I imagine if you want to play Houston, you're going to have to pay, right, for for, for those guys. But mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you're going to need to play Springs Quintana. You know, uh, I don't know what what that actually gets you. Um, but he cert- certainly is a legitimate pivot off of Springs. If if you're right, and maybe he's not as highly owned as Springs, it's certainly a, a, a you know decent pivot. I don't think he's got the same upside as Springs does um, in general. Yeah. But uh, 6,700. Hey, we we played a. Uh, we got, how did Giolito end up doing? By the way, at sixty nine hundred the other day, I don't even remember. I think not so great. I don't think. He, he was fine. He put up like twenty. 
Uh, oh, did he get 20? Yeah, because he got the win. Okay. So he got 20, okay. I think. Okay. Um, so um, he, stinks, five he's, he stinks, by the way. He's well, we could say he stinks, but then he's gonna go up and put up 45 in one of his next starts. This is what he does. Every time yes. Giolito seems like the worst pitcher in baseball, then he'll go on a run of like six straight starts where he's the best pitcher on the slate. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about uh Chicago and Texas. Uh so Cole Reagan's just for anybody who doesn't know who he is, he was a first round pick a few years back. There was the COVID season where they sort of, and I think it, he, he he had Tommy John surgery and the COVID season to sort of hold him out. I don't know how much room they're going to give him today. Um, I'm interested. He was really, I mean, he had some pretty good stuff in triple a and double double a and triple a. He, you know uh, his strikeout rate was really good. He had 113 strikeouts in 94 innings. Um you know, three ERA, whatever, 1.12 whip, a little, little, you know, nothing incredible, but he's 5,100 here against the White Sox team. We've seen struggle. Now they've never seen him before, obviously, because no one has. And I could also see an argument being made for, I mean, we're talking about a very low owned White Sox stack against a team that you have, like I always mention with them, you have a bunch of guys who historically are really good against lefties. Um, Robert, uh, or Robert, I should say, Abreu, uh, Andrew Vaughn, Tim Anderson, Eloy Jimenez. So I can see both sides of this one. And if the White Sox do, in fact, stay this low owned, I will be all over the White Sox. This is really going to be an ownership one for me, because if the White Sox are low owned, I, I think this is a spot where I want to kind of pounce. Um, but if they're not, and... Uh, there you are, there you are, there you are. Okay, hold on, let's see. All right, hang up. Okay. All right, so let's see. You back? You back? Yeah, I, 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 can you stop your screen share and start it again? Sorry. Yes, it's got yes. it. Uh, it's not showing up. No, I don't see you. Uh, I just have your your avatar. Oh wait, there you are. Oh, now it's recording again. Okay, we're back. Okay, we're back, and we're gonna see with how this works because we had a little bit of a of a technical issue here, and hopefully, we're just continuing from where we were uh, with the last two games. But what, what you were that. what you were saying was you you were talking about um about the White Sox being a, a, a low owned stack against uh, against Reagan's for, for a number of reasons. Yeah. And, and, and again, I also think that Reagan's is in play. I, yeah, I don't you know how much room he's going to have. So I think that it's, you could see both sides of it, but the fact that the White Sox are going to be so low, low owned against the lefty um, who, you know, may have the first, the, the first game jitters and all that stuff. Um, I can get behind that a little bit. And, and that's, that's, that's the thing that stood out to me in this game. The most though is that I, I, I see the White Sox being projected for very low ownership, and I think that they're a really strong stack if that is the case. If not, I will probably avoid it. And if they end up like in a double digit, anybody double digit owned, I would probably play some Reagans. Because um, my appeal to the White Sox is the fact that they are so low owned and they have so many guys historically good against lefties. But Reagans uh, has good stuff, has good strikeout stuff. So I, I can certainly get both arguments. I think he's actually a really interesting option on this slate that that might get overlooked. Yeah, I have him as the third overall value on the slate, the Reagans, um, okay. at 5,100. Um, I have him not being owned at all. I have him at like under 10%. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll just, we'll, we'll just see about that. But um, uh, I, I just don't, again, I don't think you need to play him, but, but I just, for the hell of it, so, you know, if I feel like paying for all this Houston stuff, it, yeah. it, it helps to play him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so if I, I can, I can get up to Verlander and, and, and then if I play Reagan instead of say, I wonder what, what kind of difference it really makes though. I mean, like if you played, for example, if you played Springs, now it's gotta be 2,600 a man for the last three, as opposed to if you play Reagan's, then it's, you get another 3,300, 3,200 a man, but but Springs is much better play than Reagan's. <laughs> like, yeah, so, yeah, uh, of course. But you could also play. Uh, you so could also play maybe, maybe this is maybe this is too fancy. I don't know. I, I actually think the more I look at it, I, I might, I might, uh, you know, and again, take a just gulp and then s may end up skipping some Verlander today. I, I, I do like Verlander. I have him currently as the top option, but I, I may, maybe maybe the answer is to to maybe play some of these cheaper guys. The problem is we've also got enough cheap bats out there because I mean I don't know how the lineups are going to shake out. So it's just it's it's an interesting dilemma here, but it wouldn't surprise me if Springs outscored uh, outscored Verlander, for example. Um, well, well, then you know what you do. Then you can leave like eight thousand on the table or something like that. Right? Good. 
Or you, you have wait. So you have you have Harper is 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 not playing yet, right? So so I'm just trying. Everybody on everybody on Philadelphia looks cheap enough, right? You got even if you pay up for say, let's say you want to play all these Harper, him, Hoskins, yeah, Bomb, Castellanos, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, you still plenty I mean, of plenty of plenty of stuff to spend. Play right? whatever you want. You know what I mean? Um, yep. I guess that's why. I mean, you could even you could even play Manoa Verlander if that's what you wanted to do. You know what I mean? Um, yep. So that's the thing. I mean, with the hitting, it's uh, it's hard to. Uh, I, I don't know what I would do if I to, to, if I could save money. You know, so mm-hmm. it's, uh, we'll mm-hmm. see. Yeah. One other thing that's interesting, and it's coming up in this last game we've got here today, is that. I mean, I, look, I if, if if the ownership goes to the other guys around him too much, I'll just say that, like, Bubich has pitched seven, seven and six, six innings uh, his last three starts against the Yankees, Toronto, and Tampa Bay, which none of those are easy matchups particularly. And this Boston lineup is not as good as it once was. They should be better today. Um, I think some people will have interest in Boston. I'm probably just going to avoid it with the exception of maybe a – a little two man or something with uh with JD Martinez and and maybe Bobby Dahlbeck or something like that. But I also think Bubich is in play in the same boat as sort of the Reagan's play. The difference is that Bubich at least like we've seen it a little bit from him. It's just, you know, there are there are some good guys against lefties in here, but it, it's just not a it's not like an incredible like the bottom of that lineup with Arroyo, Sanchez, and Ploecki against the lefty. I just feel like there's there's enough upside for him to be considered in that same weird weird pitcher combination if you wanted to go strange and uh at the same time i think that pavetta uh it's you know has been basically the the old the old bad pavetta after being the awesome pavetta for a while and it's hard for me just to know that he's going to come back and and look like the old awesome pavetta so i i am very confused on what to do with this game and my my instincts are at the moment probably not going to do a lot how about you yeah i might i might actually uh Take a shot at a game stack here. Um, both, both these teams kind of rate okay for me. Um, both Kansas City and Boston. So maybe, maybe if you if you tell me later that we have a good umpire or something, you get a tiny little bit of win in my favor. Mm-hmm. I, I might, I might load this game up just as something to do. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to get to Pavetta or Bubic. Uh, although, I, although, although you make a good point um, about both of them. Specifically, like Pavetta, is like always seems to be like a GPP play, you know. Well, um, he can put up thirty anytime. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, and on a slate where 30, 30 is re- would be really appreciated on a slate like this, if you want to yeah. know the truth. Um, because again, who's who? You know, Verlander, we are Verlander and Manoa. We they could get very workman like twenty fives, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and if you get and, and you can get one of these guys to pop off, you get Pavetta, you, you get a thirty out of Pavetta, then you're then you're in business. Um, yeah, and you get through but, the top uh, three in the top three in the lineup for for KC is very strong. But after that, it's you know we have a lot of guys who aren't aren't especially yeah. good at at, at baseball. At baseball, yeah. Um, <laughs> that that I think you could uh, you could probably attack enough of it. Also, you get a lot of righties in the lineup against Pavetta. Maybe maybe Pavetta is a little bit of a better play than I thought he was. Wait, I'm I'm like an idiot. Did they trade with Merrifield or something? Uh yeah, oh, there he is. Okay. Gone. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Sorry, sorry, there he is. Oh, he's in Toronto now. Yeah. Well, that's that's really fair. Yeah. Well, no, he they add him to Toronto, which obviously makes Toronto better. But it's just Toronto, same thing. Every year they get a they get another righty bat. They can't seem to get a lefty to save their lives. They have nineteen righties in that lineup. I'm not playing Kansas City. I'm, I think I'm done playing Kansas City this year. Oh, you're saying that now, but you're gonna love it when they're uh you're gonna there's gonna be a, a Pascantino Dozier. Michael Taylor day where you're going to probably guess on it. I mean, I guess when, 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 when Perez takes a day off and Melendez Melendez is off or something like that, you, you know, Ryan O'Hearn in there or something. Yeah. The one, two, three is like Michael Taylor at 2.6 and Dozier. at. I, I probably played more Michael Taylor than anybody in the United States. I think you're right. And I think I would be the one after you. who plays the right. <laughs> He's one of our guys. Um, but just to reiterate, so for what I've got for the, the, the slate as my priorities, I think Philly is, is, is chalky. And I think that they're, they're a good offense. I would probably look at leaning on not fully stacking them just because I think that's going to be pretty common. I think Houston is going to be similar in that sense. I think Tampa Bay is a little lower on than the other ones. And I think the White Sox are an extremely good low ownership play. So those are my priority stacks. Uh, and my priority pitching as of right now is, 
somehow Manoa, Verlander, Springs, and Syndergaard. But I think Reagan's Bubich and Pavetta are all guys who I'm going to look a little further into, and I'll I'll be live at six and talk a little more about that. Yeah, I'll probably end up uh, leaving money on the table today. I like uh-huh. it, Chi. Hey, it worked last time. Yeah, but uh, I will. I should be. Uh, what's today? Thursday. Ooh, uh, yeah, it's possible I'll be here at six. I'll let you know. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Sounds good. Good luck to everybody today. Hopefully this came through um, and uh, I'll see you guys at six.